is Marie from Creations Photography and Design. Several years ago, I did a tutorial to show how to make a similar picture to this 1941 graduating class of the students in FFA. And that would be a photo array. Well, I have to say the old video is from an older version of Photoshop, probably CS6. And you can see that at bit.ly slash classroom dash photos. But after I posted that in the group where there was a question about it, I thought, you know, there is a better way now in updated versions to make this classroom photo array. So I thought I'd do that. <clears throat> now, my workspace here is customized to what I do. Your workspace may look more like this. But it doesn't have enough stuff for me. I use the other workspaces so often. And I am in the process of editing a short video about workspaces and how to change them around. But back to the photo array. Before you start, you need to know what your output is going to be. Now, if you're going to take the time to do a photo array, I'm going to guess you want to print it. So let's go to File, New. And if you are going to print it, you are going to either need the photos or the print section here. Now, this one's 11 by 17. Might be big enough for what you want. You might want to um, Maybe you make it 11 by 14 or something along that line. And I want to make sure this is horizontal because vertical doesn't work as well as a hor horizontal, in my opinion. There are some things to note. If you are printing, you want your resolution to be at least 300 pixels per inch. You are going to want your working space either in Adobe RGB 1998 or in Pro Photo RGB, which is the color space of Lightroom if you start doing things in Lightroom. But you will want to change those two things. Now, I am not going to print one. I'm doing one for demonstration purposes only. And my poor computer is not only dealing with Photoshop, but dealing with a program that's recording my screen. So rather than make it work really hard with a really big resolution image, I'm going to go to mobile. Well, excuse me, I'm going to go to web. And I'm going to go ahead and use this web medium. And if we look at that, you'll see that it's only 72 pixels per inch. That's fine for viewing on a screen. Again, I want RGB color, but my color profile will be sRGB. sRGB is the color profile for anything that you put up on the web. It makes a better image because the website isn't struggling to match Photoshop. So now that we have chosen what medium we're going to work at, I'm going to click Create. And I want this to fill the screen so it's easier for you to see. And to do that, Command or Control-0 will fill right up to the space that you have available. 
Now, the first thing I'm going to do with this is put up a, some guides. And I'm going to go to View, New Guide Layout. And the guide layout remembers the one that you did before. All right, so I have set my number of columns for five, and you can count them over here. And I wanted three rows, and I've put in a gutter of point five, a half an inch, and I've also put in margins of a half an inch. That means I won't put my images, my images won't lap over the side of the paper. So I'm going to say, OK, and we have our guides. Now the next thing I want to do is add some color to this to make it, I think, a little easier for you to see and a little easier on my eyes. So I'm going to use a solid color. And I want something in the orange range. I want to look at vanilla paper like color. And I'm just clicking around the different areas to see what I want. And that looks pretty good. Now, if I really want it to look like paper, I could add a pattern overlay. And I don't know what the name of this pattern this particular pattern overlay is burlap. And I have it set to soft light. And I as I increase the opacity, you can see how it changes. And I just, I just want a little bit of texture in there, not a whole lot. We can change our angle. Um, I could have it coming from the top, say 90 degrees. Not a whole lot of difference. But anyways, I have done that. I can also change with the scale. And I will set it at 100% so you can see how the scale changes things. And now you can almost see the burlap pattern here. But I'm liking that right around 100% and right around 30-ish for my opacity. Okay, so now I have what one might call a paper texture underneath. Well, the new way to do this is with the frame tool. I believe I used a shape last time. But let's click on the frame tool and look at the options in the option bar, and it gives us two. We can have a square frame or we can have an oval frame. Now what you do is up to you. I personally like the oval, or excuse me, elliptical. So that's what I'm going to do. And I'm also going to do something that you're going to think is crazy. But I have to tell you, I hate to rearrange layers after I've done a bunch of stuff. And we're going to get a bunch of layers, 15-ish, before we're done here. I'd rather make the layers so that the oldest one is on the bottom. So when I actually have my whole layer stack, it goes from the top left to the bottom right. That means I have to start on the bottom right. And I am going to want an oval that's approximately twice as long as it is wide. So I'm going to start over here. And I'm going to drag out this oval. Mm, that, to me, is too wide. So I'm going to scrunch it in a little bit. That's more what I had in mind when I did that one. Now, I'm going to have this one all the way to the right. 
and I want one over here on the left, and I'm going to use these bottom two for, I'm going to say the class mascot, the principal, the teacher, a picture of the school. But I am going to use these as additional material. Now there are several ways that I could do this. I could copy this, Controller Command C, Controller Command V, and it would copy it right in place. And then I could get my Move tool, Shortcut V, and move it. But I don't. I want to leave it at a level, so I'm going to hold my Shift key down while I move it and put it all the way to the left. It's a little farther than I needed. There we go. Oh, I forgot to tell you. We want to go to View. And we want to make sure that Snap is on and the Snap 2 is Guides. It will make your life a lot easier to keep all of these things in a kind of a line that you want. Okay, that's one way we could do it. We could also Command or Control J, which will jump that the selected thing up to the next layer. And again, it puts it right on top of where it was before. So let's get our Move tool and drag this over. And I'm going to want that again right against the right side. Now, I'm going to show you the lazy photographer's way. I am going to hold down the Option key. And as I hold down the Option key, I'm going to click and drag. And that brings it out just like that. Option, click, drag. You're making a new layer. And this makes it a whole lot easier, I think. Now you see how when things are lined up, we have these pink lines. The horizontal pink line tells me that the centers are all even horizontally, and the centers are vertically even between this row and the row below. Cool. But the spacing isn't very good between them. Well, let's use the lazy photographer's way of fixing that. Our leftmost oval in the row is highlighted. So let's go down to the bottom or the first frame in the row. And we're going to shift click on that. And now you see this has turned blue and all of these are selected. We're still in our Move tool. We know our horizontal centers are even, but what I want to do is distribute them vertically. And if you can't see this, uh, now excuse me, I want to distribute them horizontally. If you can't see this little icon, you can get it by going into the three dots there and picking it. Let's undo that and show you again. Distribute horizontally, click, and it's beautiful. I didn't have to figure anything out. Sensei figured out how to space them for me. So now what do I do to get the top row? Well, I'm they're all selected, so I'm going to hold down that option key again, click and drag, and there they are. Now you're going to want to save as you go, probably every five or six minutes or every time you do something new. But that's what you want to do. Okay. Now we have all these frames waiting for images. And there's a number of ways you can get the frames into the images. You see here in the properties panel, we can insert image. 
and we can open the libraries. We can place on a, from a local disk embedded or place from a local disk linked. Unless you are doing a campaign with logos and stationery, something business embedded, uh, business related, excuse me, you want embedded. Linked means every time you change part of it, everything that is linked to it will change. So if you have a logo and you make a tiny change to the logo, every piece of stationery that has that logo will change. For this one, we probably don't want to do that. So I'm going to go embedded. And I'm going to go navigate to where this is. Adobe stock, move over in one, and I want the folder marked kids. There we go. And let me Well, I guess I can't see the image here. Let's uh, see what this little girl looks like. She'll do. But we can't place her yet because we have five of them. And we don't want all five of them selected. So let's just select one and then place from local embedded Oh, and it didn't remember where we were. Drat. I hate when that happens. Now to get, to, you'd think I'd learn. Stock images. Adobe stock. Arrow over to the next column, KI for kids, and let's choose an image and place it. it. Takes a second or two, but this comes right in. But this kid is a little bit far away. So what we're going to do, I'm looking at my layer stack here and the photo itself has the white line around it, so I can Command or Control T to transform that. And I'm going to hold on Option, so I transform it from the center. And then I'm going to move that around to where it looks good in the oval. Now, while we are in the Properties panel here, we can also add a stroke if you wish. So let's, right now it shows no stroke. Let's add a really dark brown stroke. And I think one pixel will look just fine. And so we'll go ahead and do that. Now, here we are. Looks pretty good, I'm thinking. Now we can place, um, we can open the libraries and let me open the libraries and I have pretty much all the same images in the libraries that I had on my hard drive. So let's drag this little boy over here Let's transform him because you're going to want to have pretty much the same size head. Now look at this. We have a problem here. If I get him in the middle, he's going to look there. He isn't going to fill the oval. So I have to leave him up a little bit farther. Okay. And then we'll transform that. We can either commit the transformation or we can use enter or return. Now I'm kind of liking that frame. So let's add that same 
dark brown stroke. And probably I should have stroked them all when I made them, but I did want you to see what the difference was. So let's stroke before we add this time. And you notice that same brown stays selected for us. I think the, one of the fastest ways to do things is go over to our finder. And I'm going to change these to actually so I can see the kids over here in the finder. same folder we navigated to before, but now I just drag it over. And again, we're going to transform it. And I know I probably should have stroked this one first, but if I go back and click on the frame, I can stroke it then. And now while we're th thinking about stroking, let's select uh, let's stroke them all. And let's see if by some chance I can select all of these. Will it let me stroke them all at the same time? I think, cross your fingers, that it will. Fantastic. All right. So let's go back to our file folder again. And here we have another little girl that's facing kind of to the center. Transform from the center. Okay, enter or return. So let's, um, and believe me, I've tried it many different ways. It's easier for me to transform them each individually at the time I place them than it is to go back and do them all at once later. Whoops, that looks like principle to me. So let's move, let's see, I have to move my folder around a little bit. Let's move him all down here. and transform him. There we go. And while we're looking, um, I have an adult in here. And it's difficult for me to see it well. Let's run these through. And you'll notice a lot of these are, there she is right there. A lot of these are Photoshop images. They are not JPEG or PNG images. She'll need a lot of, there we go. I'm going to, oops, I am going to go ahead and oh, 
pause the video for a while while I place these. And this time, I'm going to add an image of three children. And I'm going to transform it. Now on this particular image, let's make that just a little bit smaller. You could use the blonde girl. You could use the brunette. And I believe this girl is the same as the one over here in a red jacket. Or you could use the other brunette. And if you had a picture like that, you could put the three different girls in three different ovals. So you're not necessarily limited to what you can do. And the nice thing, all of these images come in as smart objects, which means they can be resized without losing quality. Okay, now I'm thinking, Commander Control Hero, I'm thinking that I want these two just a teeny bit smaller. So I'm going to transform them just a smidge. And then I'll move this guy back over on the side like that. And we're nearly done. Except if you'll notice, this one does have individual names for the teachers, the students, and it has what the school is. But you know, these are straight across and this looks okay. But I kind of like this arch shape here. So let's do a little arching. Okay. And let's start here with this little girl and this little girl on the outside edges. And I want to make sure the move tool is selected. And I am going to nudge them down with my arrow keys. If you nudge it if you tap the arrow key, it'll move it one pixel. If you want to move it 10, you hold down the shift key when you tap the arrow tool. And I want to move these girls down four. Okay. I'm going to take the top, the outside ones on the top and nudge them down four as well. to do that. I, I somehow made it. I let up on the shift key too long. The shift key keeps them from going wonky. Okay, now let's try something. I'm going to pick this little girl in red. I'm going to pick this little, well, okay. And we'll take these four students. We're going to nudge them down with a shift key twice. One, two. So now you can see we're getting a little bit of the arch. I would need a taller piece, a, a taller artboard to get a bigger curve, but this still gives us, I think, a little bit better than straight across. Okay, tap the T for the Type tool, and we want to put this in the center, and we're going to type in the name of the school. Williamston Elementary. And now let's kind of spell it correctly. There, it looks much better. Okay. And I'm going to commit that by clicking on 
commit button and I'm going to look at the text in the properties panel you can change and I've got a zillion different texts or fonts you can change and do all sorts of different things I'm just putting in the ones that I've used recently I'm liking well, I think Myriad Pro works pretty well for that. We can also change the font, and this is a 60 font. Um, let's see what 72 looks like. Mm, it fills the space pretty well. And look at there, I can use these guides to center this. Well, I'm going to go back to the type tool, T, and I want to make sure this Williamston Elementary is selected. I just move that layer up. And over here in the options bar, there is a tool that looks like a letter T on a curve. This is our warp text tool. And I want to warp this in an arch. Well, that arch is way too archy. Well, let's look like maybe, maybe 10 looks pretty good here. And I'll say OK. And then I'm going to tap the type tool again and I'm going to say third grade twenty twenty one but this is just way too out of it's just not gonna work so let's select all of that and let's look at say maybe a thirty Yeah, I think that may be work. Looks pretty good. And we're going to go ahead and now after we commit it, we can go ahead and put a warp on it. And we're going to use that arch at 10. And then I, after I type it in, I hit the tab key. Well, that's a little bit too much for that short bit of type so I'm going to put it down maybe to let's look at five and see what five does for it seven six so back to the move tool okay, now we would go through and we would add names for all the students. I'm not going to do this here. Well, maybe just one. And let's put this, this looks like a David if you ask me. Select it all. We're going to look at maybe 16 and I'm going to change this one to Avenir because it isn't quite so bold and let's look at 18 and David of course ought to have a last name and let's since we whoops <laughs> All right, now if we wanted to get, we're going to commit this, if we wanted to get a little weird, we could go back to our arch and this time put in a negative 
five, or was that six that worked pretty good? V for the move tool. And we could put a little arch underneath it. Although I gotta say, I would just soon leave it. Um, I'm gonna go back to my history before I warped it. Uh, there we go. I would just, I think leave it straight. And you want to make sure that it's centered underneath that. And when it's centered, look at there, that pink line comes on. So you have how to make a classroom array or an array of anything else that you really want to make. It could be fruit and vegetables, people, scenery but using the easy frame tool instead of the shape that we saw earlier. Thanks so much for listening. Have a great day.